Hey there, friends. Hey there, friends. What's up? So I just played the uh, intro little riff to Moon Shadow by Cat Stevens there. And I played it uh, a few different ways, none of which is exactly how Cat Stevens played it, plays it. Um, but I'm sharing here, and I just want to give a quick thought on the topic of playing things correctly, right? Uh, what that means and uh, why, in some cases, it's okay to deviate from what the artist plays. So I got an email a couple weeks ago from a, um, a kind gentleman who, who gave me some, asked some questions about my lessons and gave me some um, of his thoughts on the way that I teach some songs where he was saying that, you know, I'm teaching some of these in a way that's different from how the artist plays it, how it's recorded, right? And um, he sees that as kind of, uh, I forget the exact word, but damaging or bad uh, or detrimental because I'm teaching folks how to play it incorrectly, right? And I, I responded to him, and, and um, you know, I take that sort of feedback. I, I don't want to just throw stones and immediately respond with, you know, impulsive um, rage that he doesn't like like my lessons or approve of them in some cases. But, but rather, I said, hey, listen, um, I'm playing things how I like to play them. I, in many cases, cannot play like my favorite artists, right? Or sometimes I listen to a, a song recorded by someone I love, and there's clearly multiple guitars or there's effects or production or bass or drums or whatever where it's like, hey, I have one guitar. I can't make all that sound myself. I'd rather play something that captures the overall package in a way that sounds good in acoustic guitar, especially coming from someone me who is a bedroom, office, studio, couch, living room guitar player. That's where I play 99 plus percent of all my guitar is at home for myself. So the overall point I'm getting at is... With some songs, sure, you learn them exactly as they're played. And I'll talk about this in a second, right? I think there's a, there's a world for that. But there's other songs where either our skill level isn't there or, um, you know, maybe we, we're, we're skilled, but just the production of the song doesn't really lend itself to a, to a good, uh, satisfying arrangement on one guitar. And we, we make changes. We cut corners. Now, in a lot of my lessons, not all, but some, I will um, adjust what I'm playing. I'll change... Uh, what the artist, I'll, I'll take what the artist plays, I'll make changes and present that in the lesson. One example is Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. In the intro to that, I did a lesson teaching the intro, and uh, I had to simplify one of those four distinctive riffs that are in the intro because I cannot bend strings. It was the second or fourth fret or something. I just could I can't do it the way that it sounds on the album. And it's like, you know, I would rather put together something I can comfortably play that captures the spirit of the song. And I'm gonna teach that because, hey, here's how I like to play it, and I'm gonna offer this out to the world, the internet, YouTube, my website, whatever. You're free to not learn it that way. You know, you can you can not watch that lesson. If you if you wanna learn exactly how it's played, that's totally cool. There's, a, there's countless lessons teaching that already. You know, and um, so that's the way it is. Sometimes I'm gonna simplify things to make it manageable for me, and by extension, uh, I have had the benefit of playing music most of my life, piano for 10 years growing up, and I started playing guitar when I was 21 years old or so, and I've been playing for 20, 25 years since. Um, a lot of folks are earlier on in their journey, and I, I'm guessing that a lot of the things that I find a little bit difficult, they'll find like way difficult. And I'm not trying to be self-angradizing here or patting myself on the back for how good I am at guitar, but I'm more saying that um, these songs are treasures that we have that from all the artists we love, right? I truly believe that. And to take a, a guitar, something that we enjoy, the sound of, the feel of, the aesthetic of, whatever, and to, to, to get competent with it enough to play chords, to play licks, to play riffs, to be able to create, recreate those songs that we hear, that we love, I mean, that is like a, that, that's like a gift I don't, I don't want to sound corny, but it is, I mean, it's truly like a gift of, of, of the experience of being human and having, having music and art and all this stuff that we can sort of participate with, right, and, and play along. You can recreate your favorite songs. Now, 
if um, just coming from my own experience, that's where I'm, that's what all my teaching and all the lessons I create comes from. I know that I can't play the opening chord to um, Tripping Billies the way that Dave Matthews and Tim Reynolds do, right? And that's the first, that is the song that got me over the hump learning guitar when I was 21 years old. It was like, I want to play that intro to Tripping Billies the way that Dave Matthews does. And there were some other songs too, Jack Johnson, Cat Stevens, whatever. But I wanted to like, I remember thinking, if I could sing and play those myself, I would be happy forever. I remember distinctly having that thought. And that was like the, the fuel and the fire that got me going with guitar. And I quickly learned like some of those things I just can't do. And I still, some of those things I still can't do. And that's fine. I can, in, in many cases with experience, I've learned learning guitar, there are simpler ways to play lots of things. You're cutting corners technically, yeah. You're not playing exactly like your hero does, yeah. But it lets you play the song. It lets you feel the connection to the song that you love, right? That, and that connection, and the fidelity of that connection is what matters, okay? This is like a vehicle, how you do it, right? But it's the connection, that's the, the sort of, that's the destination, okay? I'm getting, uh, getting kind of deep here. But the, the overall point I wanna say is, for some songs, it's okay there's nothing wrong with playing it like the artist does. There's nothing wrong with aspiring to learn it exactly how it's played. And the examples I'll give you are songs like, I think of Stairway to Heaven, right? There's a very distinctive guitar part. And you can hear it clearly. And it's, I think, relatively manageable. It's not like, um, I don't know if Tommy Emmanuel or there's someone I recently saw a clip of and he's it, it, it's it's a uh, the kind of playing that is basically masterful right that is savant level stairway to heaven i would not consider as a composition yes as a cultural artifact yes right but the guitar playing uh whatever I, I'm, I'm rusty i haven't played it in years as a composition you can play it. it's manageable to learn right with, with a little bit of study i think of neil young i think of the damage and the, the needle and the damage done right Okay, don't get at me for, for plucking it wrong, but you get the idea, right? It's a, this descending bass line thing over a D. That is a, again, it's it's tricky if, you're, if you've never played a guitar before, you're early on, but my point is those are songs where, yeah, learning it like the artist can be a great goal to get after. And um, especially if it aligns with the skill set you're trying to develop. You know, if you're trying to work on your, your bass notes drumming, right? Uh, or Cat Stevens, Moonshadow, the song I'm learning right now. If you want to learn it exactly like Cat Stevens does, you can, but it's going to require this stretch. It's going to require quickly moving your pinky on and off the, the third and second fret. It's a lot to do. Now, maybe your teacher says, hey, you're learning fingerstyle guitar. You're at a point where this particular uh, collection of skills, you know, it's got the Travis picking thing kind of with the, the, the steady thumb or you're doing flourish stuff with your index finger. There's stretches. It's quick. It's a breezy song. It kind of involves strumming in the second half of the riff. If your skill, if your skill set and your the, the, the what you're going after takes you to that song, and your teacher assigns it to you, or you want to learn it, that's great. Learn it like Cat Stevens. But if you're like me, I've played guitar long enough to know I'm not going to break my neck for three weeks learning it exactly how he does. I'm going to take the version that's like the 85, 90 percent version. It's going to sound just as good. It's going to let me just play this song that I love. Right, the song I sung this song to my kids as much as almost any other song, and uh, I don't need to play it like Cat Stevens. He can play it like Cat Stevens, right? There's the the quote from I don't know if it's Rilke or whatever, and this <laughs> the, the, I, I I use this quote so much in college on papers, but it was a quote I truly identified with, which was you know what um, well it's like what another could say well don't say it, right? What another can play well don't play, and, and the whole point of it is. Cat Stevens is Cat Stevens. I can try to mimic him, and I can use that as a learning pedestal to mastering my own skill. But ultimately, this isn't about me imitating my idols. It's ultimately about using them, connecting with the art they create, right? Where it connects with me. And then uh, going my own way. And there's going to be times when I'm playing stuff that's not at all like Cat Stevens, or that's not at all like Dave Matthews, or whatever. It's like, we're all unique. Let's go after the things we love. Let's learn the songs we want to learn, okay? And if there is something that is tricky to play, but it's a song you want to learn, it's okay to cut the corners, okay? 
Everything I teach where I do do that, where I do simplify something, I will make it very, very clear. Hey, I can't play it like Jerry Garcia or I can't play it like him. Here's a simpler way to do it, right? Um, so just kind of putting it out there. Uh, again, I'm not trying to defend myself. I'm just more, I'm encouraging you, you all who play guitar, who are interested in guitar or anything you do, right? You can watch your favorite cook. I just cooked Al Pastor last week for the first time and I'm watching a bunch of videos from Rick Bayless and, and chefs who are like really good at this and I'm cutting corners there. I'm combining the Hey Grill Hey plus Rick Bayless recipes to create my own version of Al Pastor that, it, hey, it's my first time doing it. I want to get this recipe done on Sunday for my friends and family who are coming over. Cutting corners is okay, right? And I'm sure Rick and uh, Susie, I think at Hey Grill Hey would agree with me in that case that, that it's okay. So anyway, encouragement for you here. Uh, Moonshadow is a good song. leave it there. Have a great weekend, y'all, and I'll see you uh, in the next lesson. Bye-bye. All right.